Mr. Chair, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Hi, folks. Sorry for the delay. We've had a couple of technical glitches, but um, we're on and we're, we're public. Uh, I want to call to order the meeting of the uh, Hartford School Building Committee today, December 21. I'm Melvin Colon, the chair of the Hartford School Building Committee. Uh, again, welcome. And uh, as we're getting ready, uh, the, the, um, we're sharing the agenda, and I hope that those who are joining us um, through social media can see the agenda. But we are um, going to have uh, item number three on the agenda, public participation, uh, as we usually do in our live meetings. And we, we dedicate as much as 10 minutes to public participation. Um, we're limited by the platform uh, for public participation. So um, please use your chat functions um, if you would like to address the Hartford School Building Committee. Alternatively, um, if you have a paper and pencil handy, uh, you can take down my cell phone number, which is right in front of me, and send me a chat uh, if you uh, are not able or uh, to use the chat function for your particular platform. You can send me a chat. And uh, if you're ready, my number is 860-990-5533. 860-990-5533. And we will do that after we do a roll call of the members and after we review and vote on the minutes from the November 16 meetings. So we said that, let's begin with a roll call of members. Tony? Sure. Mr. Melvin Colon? Present. Mr. Thomas Clark, second? Present. Mr. Claudio Bazzano? Present. Ms. Kim Oliver? Here. Mr. Craig Stallings. Okay, with uh, three members present and one alternate, we do have our quorum. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have uh, a total of four members attending, four voting members attending the meeting. Um, very good. So, uh, motion to uh, approve the minutes of the November 16th. Hartford School Building Committee meeting. I'm requesting a motion to approve those minutes. So move, TJ Clark. Second, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Uh, discussions, questions, comments? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, 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 <laughs> sorry. Please say aye if you approve the minutes. Aye. 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 Uh, uh, nays, opposed, abstentions. All right, the minutes are approved. This motion passes. So now we move into the public participation part of the meeting. And um, so again, I'm going to share my my phone number, which is eight six zero nine nine zero five five three three. Um, Stan, have we received any uh, comments from the public? There are no comments from the public at this time. Okay, I'm going to wait about um, a few seconds. And again, my number is 860 990 5533. So, um, okay, going once, going twice. All right, I am closing the public participation part of the meeting, but please, if you would like to get in touch with the Hartford School Building Committee, uh, send me an email. Um, and, uh, huh, or, or call me, at, or text me at the number that I gave you, um, or get in touch with um, uh, one of the other members of the committee or um, with Jack to let me know that you want to get in touch with me. Very good. Let's move on to the administrative uh, part of the uh, items on the agenda. The first is the approval of the calendar. Yes, first item up uh, after minutes. Let's scroll through that. <clears throat> Our 
calendar for the year 2021 uh, is generally the, uh, the third Monday of the month, except for the months of January and February, which due to holidays, we are shifting to the Tuesday immediately after. Um, same for format that we've used in prior years. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Claudia Bazan. Second to Mulder. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, we have an approved meeting calendar. Let's move on to a presentation. All right, I will stop sharing. Kemp, would you like to pick up or will, uh, will Dan take it? Yeah, Dan is going to share and I will make the presentation. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Dan, you should be able to take control. Uh, it's giving me an error message that it's been disabled. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. And my my Zoom Kung Fu is not the best. So what I can do is I can share and you can tell me when to advance. Okay. All right, that works too. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Good afternoon uh, to the commission and to the committee. Um, my name is Kemp Moorhart. I'm principal of the SLAM Collaborative. Uh, we're going to make a presentation of the schematic design for the Bulkley renovations this afternoon. And I think you can advance. Thanks, Jack. Um, so we'll start with the existing site plan. I'm going to ab abbreviate the presentation. I've made this to several of you um, on, in various other committees. Uh, but please stop me if you have any specific questions and we can answer them on the, along the way. Um, what's represented here in this slide is the existing site condition where we have uh, the main Bulkley building uh, in the center of the page and you have you see two additional ancillary buildings that are on the north edge of the site. Uh, those two ancillary buildings are planned to be demolished in the, uh, the course of the project. Uh, and the, the main high school building will be renovated. Um, the parking lot to the east and the, the athletic facilities to the, to the east of the building will also be renovated. We can advance one. And this is our schematic layout for the, the, uh, the new site. Um, we have, we're showing the uh, renovated high school in gray. Uh, you'll see a small green area on the east side where it says Board of Education Addition and Main Entry, which is just about complete. Uh, the two elevators that are going up to the fourth floor are near completion, and uh, that will be the new Board of Ed entry. Uh, the new entry into the high school will be at the corner, the knuckle between the um, gymnasium and pool wing and the main building proper, and we'll see some more images of that shortly. You'll note that there's a central commissary indicated on the northern part of the site, and there's a small addition to the northern portion of the gymnasium wing that is part of the, uh, the renovation to the high school. The commissary is actually being planned as, as a separate project with a separate um, grant from the state currently. So we are, that is just a, a placeholder at this point in time, but it's it will most likely reside in that vicinity of the site. Uh, you'll note that the existing parking lot will be re-engineered, but by and large will remain in the same location. Uh, we intend to have the bus loop operate similar as it does today, where the easternmost curb cut on Elliott Street will be where buses enter. They will loop around and uh, load and, and uh, unload along the frontage next to the building and then exit the site on the, the western curb cut on Elliott. Uh, there will be a portion of the parking lot that will be dedicated for Board of Ed employees, and then the balance will be uh, will remain as the school parking lot for staff and faculty, as well as uh, whatever administrative assignments for student parking there may be in the future. The 
athletic field and track will be renovated to be essentially a mirror image of what was installed at Weaver. Uh, the intent is to have an eight lane synthetic track and a four sport field for football, uh, lacrosse, soccer, and field hockey. Uh, the six tennis courts will also be renovated as well as the softball field. Um, the, as part of the athletic facilities, there will be a full track and field event, um, set of events that are, that are part of the, uh, the application. So you'll have the shot put, the high jump, discus, as well as long jump within that facility. Could advance one. Uh, this is the lower level floor plan for the Buckley High School. You'll note the, the blue, the royal blue uh, spaces to the leftmost edge of the page are conceptual representations of the commissary. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of that because it's still a work in progress. But looking at the small addition to the, the north side of the gymnasium addition that will house the custodian spaces, the receiving and loading dock for not only the high school, but also the uh, Board of Ed print shop function, which is in the darker gray, that L-shaped darker gray area is the Board of Ed print shop. Uh, immediately to the top of the page is the uh, regional school choice office. So the, the green spaces represent that office function. And this was placed here specifically to allow um, in, ingress and egress from grade level to this office function, uh, but that is also independent of the school. This, uh, that portion of the building is actually a half story lower than the floor level of the uh, spaces immediately to the uh, below it and the plan, uh, which gives it an, an autonomy uh, so that office can uh, operate independently of the school. Uh, immediate, the, the light blue spaces are the athletic spaces. Um, these are athletic locker rooms and then the pool to the far plan south. Uh, new pool locker rooms and a renovated pool area as well as some additional mechanical space uh, adjacent to the pool. The balance of the uh, floor plan on the the right or the middle portion, the, the larger gray spaces, that is a um, the existing utility room and, and central plant room, boiler room, and then there is a series of program, programmed storage rooms along that edge there. Thank you, Jack. Uh, and then finally, on the far right of this drawing, this is the light green, that is the um, at-grade entrance for the Board of Ed. And you'll note that it come, it's a lower elevator lobby. You come in off grade, and then you have two elevators and a small stair that goes up to the, the main level of the high school, which is the first floor. Uh, and last but not least, the IGOL program in the orange. Um, those are That's a district-wide special ed program that resides in this location of the floor plan. And they also uh, require that grade access, and we were able to provide that along that edge. And then of course, the main entrance into the high school is right in the corner with a main entrance secure vestibule, a security credential window in that purple space immediately adjacent. And there is a an elevator that goes uh, up to the roof uh, and stops at all the floor levels on this side. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the, the small um, rectangular donut shape of purple spaces right in the center of the plan, that is the health suite. Okay, we can advance one. Moving up to the main level floor plan, uh, this is the first floor as everybody knows it today. Um, the blue area is the gymnasium. The plan is for that gymnasium to have a full wood athletic flooring system and that this will serve uh, for premier basketball games uh, you'll note that there are um, coaches' offices as well as PE locker spaces immediately adjacent. So that's a, a, an improvement from the design as it stands today, where PE locker rooms were down one level. We were we brought the PE locker rooms up to this main level with the gymnasium. So P 
PE classes can go in, get changed, and make, go right into the gym without having to, to traverse a floor level. Uh, immediately to the south, plan south of that is the second story volume of the pool. Um, and then immediately south of that is the purple space, which is the student support center. Uh, you see in the yellow is all the circulation. And so um, if you, if you, Jack, if you go back up to the knuckle between yeah, at the entrance, there you go. So there's a set of, a set of stairs that comes up from the lower lobby to the upper lobby. This is actually a two story lobby element. So you can overlook down into the entrance. Uh, you see the elevator. And as soon as you get to the top of that set of stairs, you're presented with the uh, main administrative suite in the purple. So that is the admin suite. Uh, as you come into the floor plan, you have the uh, the reddish spaces are the kitchen and cafeteria, and that we have two distinct individual cafeteria spaces programmed. There will be a dividable partition between to allow that to be used as one uh, at times. But in working with uh, Digna and and the rest of the uh, programming staff, it was deemed that two individual spaces would be more manageable and. Uh, better for the program. Moving a little bit further to the right on the plan, the light green again is the uh, the Board of Ed space and the Welcome Center. Uh, you can see those two elevators, banks that go up and it stops at this level. And so you have uh, access to the Welcome Center. This is the main face of, of the Board of Ed to the public. Uh, so families will come in, register their children here and take other take care of other support services there. Uh, and that is distinctly uh, separated from the high school. There are no no doors other than uh, egress only doors that come into that corridor. The gold space are, um, is the bar program. It is uh, a school within a school and it serves uh, overaged and undercredited students and they have individual uh, it's a best thought of as a school within a school, and they have uh, their own set of classrooms within it, including a science classroom. Uh, the um, teal spaces are the music spaces that support the auditorium function for drama programs as well as um, music programs. There is one large band choral space in the center and then a series of smaller support spaces surrounding. And that concourse that exists today through from the uh, Weathersfield Ave side to the back side of the site will remain. We will be putting a new elevator in that entrance area to incorporating it into that entrance vestibule. To uh, And that, that elevator will go up three floors. It will stop on the first, second, and third floor. So it will support the second level of the auditorium as well as getting uh, individuals up to the third floor where the uh, ninth grade academy will be and we'll get into that in just a second okay we can advance up on the second floor uh, we'll start and we'll go from left to right again um, the light blue space is the fitness center it will have some overlooks into the gymnasium space so there'll be some transparency and connectivity there um, going Plan South, the three orange classrooms are part of the uh, RISE program. And those three classrooms work in conjunction with the other smaller orange spaces to the immediate right. And that whole uh, area is its own suite and it has an entrance door off of the, uh, the corridor immediately to the top right there between counseling in purple and um, and that RISE program. You'll notice the two blue classrooms as well. Those are two health classrooms. Uh, they're colored blue just because they're associated with the, uh, the PE program, but otherwise they're classroom spaces. Um, you'll note that uh, in the gold, there are classrooms all along the Wethersfield Avenue front. And this is at this level um, captured space Currently, that is part of the understory. Uh, if, uh, if any of you are familiar with the uh, two-story high understory that's currently 
at Bulkley. Um, we are capturing that floor area to allow to have uh, classrooms on the exterior and get natural light into those classrooms. The three stairs, excuse me, the six stairs that are existing will remain and we are creating three locker zones um, that are corridor slash locker zones be that bridge between the front and the back stairs. Uh, there'll be lockers on either side on the walls and there are, there are locker islands in the center of that space, the uh, islands being low, only going up four feet to permit good observation and supervision while in those locker zones. And then you have the, uh, the long cross corridors for circulation. In the center of the floor plan, there are some specialty classroom spaces. Those two uh, reddish larger spaces are, um, are pathways spaces. And then moving immediately north of that, we have the media center where the cursor is right there. And then immediately adjacent to the right is a new uh, theme-based lecture hall, very similar to what we've done at Weaver, where it's a two-tier lecture hall setting. Uh, you enter on either side on a flat floor arrangement. And as you move around, move deeper into the space, uh, there will be a portion of that floor area that is raised to allow for that two tier feel of that space. Uh, finally, on the, the pinkish reddish um, spaces on the far right of the uh, floor plan are additional specialty spaces, pathway spaces. And they will be getting some um, borrowed light from the two-story volume of the concourse um, below. Yeah, right there. Thanks. And then, of course, the uh, auditorium to the far right will be fully renovated. Uh, we can advance up to one, one more floor. Uh, the third floor is uh, primarily an academic classroom floor, but we'll, uh, we'll start on the left again. We have in the teal spaces um, are the art rooms. There are two primary art classrooms and between the smaller teal spaces are art storage and there's a kiln room in there as well. And the one immediately to the upper left is a um, digital computer-based graphic arts classroom. All the gold spaces you see are uh, classrooms on the perimeter. There are a few classrooms on the interior as well. And then um, on the far right hand side of the uh, floor plan, the, the reddish color classrooms, that is the ninth grade academy. So it, that is intended to operate as its own portion of the floor. There will be some cross corridor doors uh, that announce your entry into this ninth grade academy zone of the building. Uh, and there, is, there are some administrative um, offices in there as well for supervision of that cohort of students. We could go one more floor up. And finally, the fourth floor um, will acknowledge that the Board of Ed space is in the, uh, the greenish color that's operating today and will continue to operate. And we have that kind of uh, Z-shaped separation wall that allows for three of the stairs to be uh, utilized for the Board of Ed egress, and then similarly three stairs in the educational occupancy to the left. And the fourth floor is primarily is primarily um, science classrooms. You'll see six major science classrooms on this level, and we put the two physics classrooms on the interior, the ones that do not have exterior windows, and that was done intentionally because they often perform light experiments and uh, in physics classes. Um, and then there's also some administrative support in purple, as well as some um, supporting classroom spaces in the orange and yellow. And that rounds out the floor plan. <clears throat> uh, this is Hi, an image. Thank yes. Thank you so much for doing Doing that, um, Kemp, I really appreciate it. Uh, are there any questions for our architects? I heard somebody. One more. 
um, Jack, just one more slide. This is the image of the uh, the new entrance in the corner between the gym wing and the main building, and I'll leave it at that. Great. Thank you so much. Are uh, questions or comments from our uh, committee members? I'm not hearing anything, so you may be muted. I don't have any questions. Thank you, TJ. Uh, thank you, Councilor Park. Well, thank you so much for this presentation. Um, My pleasure. All right, do we have there are uh, no questions or comments? Oh, sorry, we need to vote, right? Yes, please. Uh, I do want to note that um, uh, this presentation was made on Friday to the members of the advisory committee, which which is composed of um, uh, T. Melvin, I think we lost you. Okay. Can you hear me now, Jack? We do, yes. Okay. I just want to note that um, we made this presentation uh, on Friday, or that uh, SLAM made this presentation to a group of, um, to the advisory committee for the Buckley School. That group is composed of um, teachers, administrators, um, uh, parents, and folks from the Board of Education, as well as uh, representatives of the community, uh, the NRZ representatives, and uh, they voted to approve this plan. So I just want to make sure that I mentioned that as well. Um, Kemp had mentioned that there were several public meetings, and at the Friday public meeting, there was a formal vote of the advisory committee to approve this, this plan. Uh, and actually, it was very well, uh, very well taken. So, all right. Uh, motion to approve this plan. So moved to you, Clark. Thank you, Councillor. A second. Second, Kim Oliver. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? All right. These uh, schematic designs are approved. So moving on to the next item on the agenda. Before Very we move good. on, before we move on, can we just note that the approval of these uh, uh, documents authorizes the architect to move into the next phase of design? Thank you. That's um, uh, that will be reflected in the minutes. Very good. Thank you. Um, so we move on to uh, action items, and we'll turn the meeting over to um, Jack Butkus from Arcata so and UCNR. Okay. Thank you. First item up concerns Weaver High School. It's change order number 48 to Newfield Downs uh, for in the total of $37,525. Uh, the items are, as noted, concerning uh, uh, some additional general conditions funds for overhead costs of, of running the, the CM operation, uh, less staff, uh, just uh, credit for some unused sod at the baseball and softball fields, and the purchase of some equipment for the pool space. This has been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee, and we ask your endorsement. I want to note, um, I'm going to keep my uh, video off. I want to note that um, at the school, uh, the change order committee, uh, we have been joined uh, by Nathaniel Gale, who is the director of operations for the city of Hartford. And uh, he has been voted on as an alternate uh, to the change order committee. So, um, so it's a valuable link of communication with the uh, mayor's office, also um, an experienced uh, pair of eyes. We lost you again, Melvin. T 
you hear us, Melvin? Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't hear me yet, right? Uh, we, you, we have you now. Okay. I am going to disconnect a couple of things. Uh, in the meantime, uh, please bear with me. Um, we are looking for a motion to approve. Is that right? Correct. All right. Uh, motion to approve. So moved, TJ Clark. Second. Second, Kim Oliver. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. This motion passes. Let's move on. I'm going to do something to uh, fix my situation while you're doing that. Okay. Next item is change order number 21 to Downs Construction for Martin Luther King Jr. Campus. Total value is uh, $71,009.52. Uh, the items are as listed uh, with the, the predominance being eligible for state reimbursement. This also has been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee and we ask your endorsement. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right, are there any questions about this change order? Any comments? Anything that jumps out at you? Uh, okay, uh, motion to approve. So move TJ Clark. Thank you, Kim Thank Oliver. You, Thank you, Ms. Oliver. All those in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right, let's move on. Uh, next, uh, no. next item is the approval of construction documents and authorization to move forward to OSCGR submittal for the abatement and demolition phase at Buckley High School. Uh, as you know, from the presentation we just had on the schematic design of the renovation, uh, we are moving you know, quickly through the design process now. And the next step in order to profit from the remaining design time is to begin cleaning the building of hazardous substances, as well as doing the selective demolition necessary to accommodate the, uh, uh, the new renovated functions. Uh, to date, we have uh, produced the documents for the abatement and demolition and want to get that out on the street so that we can start that work in the new year. And we ask the committee's approval of the uh, of the phase five demolition and abatement uh, to submit for state approval and ultimately for bidding. All right, thank you. Any comments or questions on the uh, proposed uh, phase five? Did you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions on the proposed phase five? Okay, he hearing none, motion to approve. The move, TJ Clark. Thank you, Councillor. Seconded, Claudia Bozzano. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, this, uh, uh, this motion passes. Next, please. Uh, next is amendment number one to the contract of new field construction for the Buckley High School project. Uh, this will place into their contract the value of pre-construction staffing, uh, construction staffing based on the proposed construction schedule, and general conditions items uh, which will support the field operations through the demolition, abatement, and reconstruction process for the school itself. Included also are some allowances uh, as we typically uh, include for such things as uh, uh, site maintenance, energy for, for temporary heat, dumpsters, etc. The total value of this, uh, of this modification is now, where are we here? Current value, um, thirteen thousand one hundred and forty-eight thousand, thirteen million one hundred and forty-eight thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, the submission, with its breakdown, has been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee, and we ask your endorsement. I will add to that that uh, the um, as a, Nathaniel Gale, the director of operations for the city of Hartford. Um, did a particularly close um, 
review of, of this um, of these documents. All right, have you said that any comments? Comments? Any questions? All right. You're trying to get uh, your most of you on mute, but it looks like uh, okay. Motion to approve. I have a quick question. This is Kim. Sure. Um, my quick question is: so I noticed that it says like you know current value versus revised versus the difference, right? But it's because it's going into the next phase. Is the is the quote unquote current value? what was like estimates from the, um, you know, from the proposal or something like that? Like, why are we showing a difference in values? Uh, in this particular project, since the uh, solicitation for construction management services uh, needed to be expedited to allow the construction of the Board of Ed space prior to our knowing clearly whether we were dealing with an unoccupied building, uh, as far as the students were concerned, or if we would be renovating around the students, we did not have a, a tight scope of work that we could get a firm number on. We got unit costs from all of the construction managers to use in evaluating their proposals, but we could not get bottom line values because we didn't know how long we were gonna keep them there. Uh, so now that we have the clarification that the students are out of the building and will be able to adopt the schedule accordingly, uh, these these figures have been computed based on that uh, on that version of reality, uh, since we did not have uh, that level of detail at the time of the RFP. Uh, so if we pop down to the summary, we have uh, uh, in their contract already was the cost of them acting as a general contractor to build out the Board of Ed space, uh, any change orders issued to date, which helped us get a jump on some of the work moving forward to renovation. And then their, the pre-construction fee, which was calculated. So they presently have a value of 10 million four. We're adding these costs, which will support the staffing and their efforts of, in 13, uh, 148, 150, which is the number that we're approving today. Ultimately, an additional uh, additional amendments will be added to their contract uh, once we get the bids in for demo and abatement, and likewise for the, uh, the construction work after we get the bids for the renovation proper. Um, but this will take care of their their staffing and overhead costs through that entire process. Got it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. I just what, need to keep asking this now. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, okay. Thank you. If for any reason my uh, my internet connection uh, uh, whips out on me, I uh, I would ask. Um, uh, Councillor Clark to take over the meeting since he is the uh, um, the, the uh, vice chair for the uh, committee. All right. So, uh, uh, hearing no more comments or questions, motion to approve. So, so moves. Oops. No, go ahead, Cam. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so moves, Kim Oliver. Thank you. Second. Second, T.J. Clark. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? This motion passes. Thank Next. you. Next item is change order number nine to Newfield Construction for the work at Buckley High School. Total value of this change is $15,853. Uh, items are eligible for reimbursement, and this has been re reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee, and we ask your endorsement. All right, thank you. Um, any questions or comments? Motion to approve. So move, Kim Oliver. Thank you. Second. Second for uh, approval. For approving this motion. Um, let's see, we haven't heard a second yet. Um, second, Claudio Bazzano. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bazzano. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, let's move on to the Burns School. Next, we have change order number five to, to Pioneer Builders for the work at Burns. Uh, total value is $1,998. Uh, this concerns the 
relocation of phones to a location that differed from what the uh, uh, technology design standards had indicated. Uh, MHIS has revised their expectations on classroom phones, and this adopts uh, locations in the pre-K classrooms that conform to that new standard. This has been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee, and we ask your endorsement. All right. Um, I'll just start this the regular Robert Schultz way. Uh, motion to approve. So moved, Claudio Bazzano. Thank Second, you, Oliver. All right. Questions or comments on the motion? All right. Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, next item. And next we have a purchase order request to RNB Enterprises for Burns. Total value is $2,997.88. This is to provide smart boards, uh, relocating existing equipment that's in the building now to rooms that will be used by the students um, in essence as internal swing space as we begin to renovate the building. Uh, now with the limited occupancy of the building with uh, the current COVID process, uh, we have the opportunity to uh, uh, to do this work and be ahead of the curve for the next school year rather than doing it later on when we may hopefully be back to full-time occupancy. Uh, this also has been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee and we ask your endorsement. All right, motion to approve. So move TJ Clark. Thank you, Councillor. Second? Second, Kim Oliver. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please uh, say I have, I have a question. This is Councilman sure. LeBron. Sure, sure, go ahead. So, is right here, so they're charging $3,000 to just move smart boards from one part of the building to another? Yeah, this is to move them into locations where there is not a smart board, nor is there infrastructure to support them. Uh, so this is a, a wholesale move to uh, uh, to provide smart boards in a, you know in those classrooms that we'll be using as uh, swing space while we renovate. But yes, taking existing equipment, relocating it, installing it with uh, all that is necessary. So how many smart boards is it total? I believe there are four classrooms. No, nope, five. Five. Oh, thank you for that. Okay. So, and and with the infrastructure, is the infrastructure just is it wiring as well? Would these be Wi-Fi access, or are we installing internet, or is it just physically like mounting them in rooms? It's mounting them in rooms as well as the infrastructure with the wiring, as well as any um, consoles that are needed, because these other smart board. These other rooms do not have that capability. Okay, so basically they're charging $600 to move each smart board in every room from one room to the other. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Appreciate the question and just wanted to reassure you that, that these questions were also asked at the change order committee meeting. Hope you can hear me. Um, thank you. And uh, but, but thank you so much for asking, raising those questions. Um, if there are no other. We lost your Melvin. Did he lo lose again? Okay. Um, just for con continuity, um, if there are no other questions, I believe we're going to transition to a, uh, to a vote. Correct. All right. Um, there are no other questions. All in, uh, the chair will entertain a motion. Already been moved. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions, any proposals? Ayes have it. Okay, Jack. Thank okay. you, Councilor. Can you hear me? Yes. We, All right. we do. Back in the hands of the chair. Thank you so much. Are we done with this portion of the agenda? We are done with action items. Uh, next up are project status reports. Sal for Weaver. Weaver High School. Again, we proceed uh, getting closer to uh, close out of all of the existing contracts. Um, there are some punch list items that remain. 
that are being addressed at this point in time. Um, but we have we have closed up many of the contracts, and there are still I mean, I'm sure there are still more coming. Uh, but we expect that that will be done uh, over the course of the next month or two. Thank you. Uh, moving on to MLK, or any questions from the committee on Weaver? Hearing none, Brian, MLK, please. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Happy holidays. Um, MLK, we are uh, in the process of turning over the gym. We should, uh, when school returns, we should be in a position to hand that over to the, uh, the school or the city. Um, the auditorium is falling another month behind and looking at the end of uh, January. Um, the, we're in the process of uh, gathering all the closeout documents for each individual sub. Um, I think that we would be wrapped up in terms of physical construction um, no later than uh, middle of February with the miscellaneous. As far as uh, the punch list on the main, uh, the educational portion of the building, well, we started with over 8,000 items. We're down to about 130 at this time. Um, they've been pretty good about letting us get in there when the kids are not in session on Wednesdays and, uh, and working Saturdays as well. Um, I don't know if there's any much more I can add than that. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can report to the committee having uh, been in the auditorium uh, last week the uh, artistic painting that's uh, been proceeding for a while is really really going to be you know quite impressive uh, when you get to see the final product it's uh, it's coming along quite nicely it's it, it was a, a major effort in order to preserve and uh, restore that detail and to replicate the coffered uh, plaster ceiling but uh, it really will be the, the the crown jewel on that building when it's done uh, moving uh, any questions from the committee All right, uh, Toya, uh, update on Burns, please. Yes, good morning. Um, in regards to Burns pre-K um, pre, pre classrooms, we are finished with um, removing the oil tank and the trash compactor will be um, reconnected to, supposedly today and the electrical to that as well. So that went well. So after that is done, we will be 100% done with Burns pre-K classrooms. In regards to the Burns renovations, we we received the approval from the state to move forward to the DD design. So we will be ready with a DD design and a reconciliation, hopefully by the end of January. And that's the update. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? All right. And uh, is there anything beyond uh, what was presented uh, by SLAM, Sal, to uh, update us on Buckley. No. Hearing, uh, I, I believe we've we've pretty well covered uh, all the Buckley issues. Does the committee have any remaining questions on Buckley? Hearing none, did, did, did I drop off? No, Jack, just okay. Okay. Still hear you. Uh, all righty. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, EEO reports. Uh, Kurt, can you give us a, a capsule form update? Oh, God. Good, mo uh, good morning. Uh, afternoon, I should say. Not much has changed. Uh, Prologue still down. Uh, we still, uh, we have received a number of verifications with uh, this regard to Weaver. So we'll be doing a closeout remote report uh, in the next month uh, to give a final labor report. The Martin Luther King project uh, still hovering around that 26.5 percentile. Um, again, we don't expect that to change much. Uh, and again, uh, the with the Burns and Buckley, we expect uh, to report, you know, more sub, uh, uh, labor hours when the greater renovations take place. Uh, right now, uh, efforts have mainly been concentrated on, uh, you know, attracting uh, the, the minority and women uh, contracting pools into the uh, 
new set aside efforts for the two new schools, uh, which are going pretty smoothly so far. So I don't know if there's any questions. Uh, you know, we're working with the jobs funnel uh, in terms of the new uh, residents they're cycling into their programs. Uh, should receive an update from them shortly, uh, but we hopefully expect to see some of those on the projects uh, in 21, 2021. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, as Kurt mentioned, we do, we do have some additional resources that came on to the list as uh, uh, contractors interested in participating in our set aside program. Uh, I think we went from 60 to over 100 uh, in the current iteration, which uh, is encouraging. And we had our first meeting uh, to discuss uh, packages connected with the demo and abatement at Buckley uh, just last week. And those uh, participants will be uh, start to receive their notifications this week so that we can prepare to go out to bid. Uh, moving on to project closeout, I have nothing new to report on this list of 15 legacy projects. I know that they are in various stages of, uh, of audit, uh, but we do not have any final, uh, final results published from the state in order to update the committee at this time. Uh, is there any other new business or any questions on what's uh, been presented? Any new business? Questions, comments? I'm, I always uh, like to ask if we have followers uh, for this meeting, Stan. You have several people watching. There are no questions. All right. Thank you. Well, I, um, if there are no questions uh, or comments or other business, I want to wish everyone, first of all, a happy solstice day and also happy holidays. Stay safe. Um, motion to adjourn. So move, TJ Clark. Thank you, Councillor. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Bye, everybody. Have a happy holiday. Bye. Happy, happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.